Welcome to another edition of the Go Knows Podcast. I am your host, Gregory McCoy. This podcast is by a fan for fans. I am not a journalist. I am not a reporter. I am not a insider. I do not work for a website. The majority of my content comes from me and my opinion. Other information comes from the internet. Today is September 18th, 2021. No segments for this episode, just more Florida State rambling. Um, Florida State football rambling. Um, I try not to do like instant reaction or hot takes or just be emotional after the game. And that's not what this episode is going to be. It's just more or less talking about the state of the program, the coaching staff, and just some, some personnel moves that I would do. Um, so, you know, I've read on the internet and social media and, um, podcasts where people are calling for Norvell's job. And I just don't think, okay, if you go with Dion, I don't think Dion's going to come in here year one and turn this thing around. I don't think there's any coach with the exception of maybe Saban or Urban Meyer that could come in here year one and turn this thing around because those guys just come in respect. Norvell really hasn't done anything in college football. He he won a uh, AAC championship at Memphis, but is as is. is as um uh, as um uh, as I look at the some of the coaches decisions that have been made throughout these first three games, um you know, I just have to come to the conclusion that you can't hit the reset button again on this program. And essentially, you've hit the reset button. If if you fire this guy, it's going to be three times in five years. And I just don't think you can do that. I just, you know, you really can't count last season because of uh, COVID-19. Um, he's had a whole off season to do his thing. The team in the first two games looked very competitive. Um, to Today, I mean, just bonehead decisions, just bonehead penalties, undisciplined just they just did not look good and um you know I don't know I can say in my opinion that I don't think Mackenzie Milton is the answer I think if you're picking between Milton and Travis you got to go with Travis and I know I've been kind of back and forth on that but I, I can say conclusively with having a long look at Milton today, he's not the answer. Um, and I would dare to say if Jordan Travis is hurt, it's Chubba Purdy time. I think it's really time to start playing the young guys. You're 0-3. What are we playing for at this point? I think at this point, you really only have one winnable game on the schedule, and that's UMass. I don't think you're going to win an ACC game this season. I really don't feel like you're going to win an ACC game. You're not beating Louisville. You're not beating Clemson. You're not beating Syracuse, NC State. You're not beating Miami. You're not beating Florida. So the only winnable game left on this schedule, in my opinion, is UMass. And I just feel like you need to throw um, Chubba Purdy out there. You need to throw Lloyd Willis out there. You need to throw Rod Orr out there. I think you need to put those guys on the field and just let them get game experience. Bavion Johnson shouldn't be out there. Brady Scott shouldn't be out there. Shouldn't be out there. When Bavion Johnson got hurt, uh, Darius Washington moved to center, and I thought he played pretty well. And I've been saying for the longest that he's an interior lineman. So I, I just and, and and defensively in the secondary, I think you need to put Knowles out there, let him play because he, he showed up in the spring game. You need to just play the young guys. I mean, it can't be any worse than what we're doing now. 
if we're gonna if we're gonna go one in eleven, which I think is a distinct possibility at this point, um, why not get some of these young guys some experience, man? Like, if you're trying to red shirt these guys and save these guys, you might not have a job. Um, the QB sneak with Milton, I, I just, he is essentially on one leg, no disrespect to Mackenzie Milton, but it is what it is. He's essentially on one leg and just, he doesn't have the, um, mobility to escape because of our offensive line woes. And, uh, I really feel like it's Chubba Purdy time. Um, you finally got Cam McDonald involved in a game. Um, and I just think you need more plays like that. I like the screens to, to Ward. I like the little quick pitch out plays. You know, those were great plays. I like when you took shots, but I just don't feel like McKenzie arm, McKenzie Milton's arm is strong enough to make those throws. I just don't feel like he can push off that leg to, to really um, push the ball down the field. Um, I think defensively, it was I would give it like a D plus performance. I think you have to take into consideration that they were on the field a majority of the game. Wake Forest ran damn near a hundred plays, and. You know, we just couldn't stop them. Um, but, again, I like I said a minute ago, offensive line, Gibbons, Washington, Love Taylor. My tackles would be Willis and Orr. And you just, whoever can play left tackle. I mean, I, I guess the, the the edge would go to Willis because he's been on campus a little bit longer. I mean, these guys, both of these guys are six, seven, three hundred pounds. I just feel like you just gotta put them out there. The best experience to me is playing. I don't think red shirting them is giving them the game experience. And I could see if we were two and one, three and zero, oh, or one and two, if we had one today, okay. We're going to keep these guys. We're going to let them watch and get in the weight room and get stronger. But I don't think you have that luxury at this point. I think you need to play your young guys and just to see what you got because you're building for the future. You're not building for right now. And like I said, if they fire Norvell, that's, I mean, they haven't even paid Willie Taggart his money. So how are they going to fire Norvell? They, they're not in a position to fire anybody at this point. And as I'm recording this, I don't know if anything has happened. Um, but when Norvell initially got hired, I wasn't a fan. I just felt like it was a sidestep. As far as the hire, I felt it was a sidestep. I, you know, Florida State is not one of the top jobs anymore. I think you can still get guys in terms of recruits. But you know, Jimbo was the guy. He wanted to he wanted to be at Florida State for life, but you know, the powers that be ran him off. And I don't want to go back down that rabbit hole, but I'm just saying, at some point you have to uh, you know, stick with a guy. And you know, he's still cleaning up the program as far as the bad apples and stuff. But I don't know, man. I, I really believe in my heart you're not going to win an ACC game this season. I really feel like that. I really feel like UMass is the only winnable game left on this schedule. Okay, unless George Travis just goes out here and just has just a, you know, out-of-body performance, which is possible. 
But you you cannot tell me that Brady Scott is better than Lloyd Willis and Rod Orr. He's not better than both of them. And you can't convince me that Baby on Johnson is better a better option at center than Darius Washington. He's not. So at some point you have to reevaluate your personnel. At some point you have to reevaluate your personnel on the offensive line and in the secondary. At some point you have to reevaluate what you're calling on defense. When you see that formation, when you see that formation from the Jacks the end of the game against Jacksonville State, I mean cover four, maybe, possibly. And um you know I'm not I mean I didn't have any high expectations coming into the season. I think my expectations were kind of raised a little bit after the Notre Dame game. I was like, okay. He he he's gotten these guys to play hard for 60 minutes. He's got them to compete for 60 minutes, but you didn't see that in this game right here. I, I'm i not going to say they quit, but you just didn't see the same effort. So, we'll see what happens next week. Um, so, um, that concludes this episode. Um, do your research on everything. This podcast is available on YouTube and all podcast platforms. Um, thank you for listening. I appreciate your support. And as always, go Knowles.